Using a loan with a self-directed IRA. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. In today's video, I've got Isaac Rodriguez, a client of IRA Financial and a star employee to discuss and add perspective on what it takes IRS rules involving using a loan for a self-directed IRA investment. So welcome, Isaac. Thank you. Thanks. I know this is one of your favorite topics. You're like bugging me. Let's do this. Let's do this. Because I know you use a loan to buy real estate in a solo 401k. Correct. And I did leveraging and usually they're higher interest and they're higher and they're harder to, um, to get. Um, but I was able to get one. Um, but I never understood so much about the IRA. The leveraging on the IRA because of the uh, tax consequences right. that you always brought up. And I like Perfect. the audience to, to hear Thank you you. Know, a breakdown of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. That's why I wanted to bring you in because then we can then compare and contrast the IRAs with the solo yeah. and your experience. So basically, when you use a, you can use a loan with an IRA. The only requirement is you cannot personally guarantee the loan. So whether it's margin to buy stock, a loan to buy a, a tractor for your uh, piece of land in your IRA or a loan to actually buy the real estate you want to acquire with your IRA. The first requirement under 4975C is you cannot personally guarantee it. So it needs to be a non-recourse loan. So to clarify, so you need a non-recourse loan for a self-directed IRA and a solo 401k? Correct. You need them both okay. for an IRA and a 401k. Why? Because the primitive transaction rules under 4975C do not allow you to personally guarantee an obligation of your IRA. Whatever the reason why, they want the IRA to be kind of separated from you. So IRA or 401k, if you're gonna use a loan to buy an asset, real estate or stocks, mm -hmm. it's gotta be non-recourse. Okay, so once you can do that, and as Isaac said, you're probably gonna pay a little bit more for that loan, right? You're gonna put, how much did you have to put down, for example? Um, at least 30, 35%? I, every every loan officer is different, so I believe I, I had to do like 35, 40 yeah. percent. See, when you do a non-recourse loan, you generally going to put have to put down more than just a regular mortgage if you bought a home, where you can do 10 percent or 20, just because the lender's taking greater risk, right? Yes. If, if your IRA or 401k stops paying, all they can do is take the property back. They can't go after you, take your dog, your that's cat, why you're not take your shirt off your back. <laughs> exactly. So that's why it's priced. And you're going to pay a bit higher interest. You're going to pay a couple points yes. um, for, for that responsibility. It depends on the bank. I mean, you would have to like really research, get some, you know, get some brokers to, to, to receive. Did you, you know, use any of our contacts? I forget. Because we have a number of non-recourse lenders. I work don't. With. We, well, no, I didn't. You went on your own. I went on my okay. own. Okay. So that's fine. Like you can use traditional banks. You can also, we have a number of non-recourse lenders that we work with right. for IRAs, 401ks. All they do is specialize in non-recourse leverage right. for basically retirement accounts. Okay, so that's the first requirement. You can't personally guarantee it. The second requirement is, well, the second thing to understand is UBIT. And unrelated business income tax, unrelated business taxable income. It's an acronym, you can use it either way. It's an ugly four letter word. <laughs> Right. right. How does that work? Okay. I mean, I understand it, it doesn't trigger you, but the solo for one K using leverage does not trigger. Right. And that's why UBIT. you actually, but use the, the IRA solo. does. So, yes. so why is that so? Okay. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> I looked at the legislative history. Actually, I actually, I've researched You're a tax attorney. What do you mean? You I don't know. know. I don't know everything. God, you can ask my wife. <laughs> um, actually there's some language in the legislative history dating back to like 19 early eighties. And I honestly, I think the reason is they wanted 401ks pension plans to have more flexibility investing than us, than regular or folks. Maybe, or maybe help the small business? I don't know. Because it's self-employed? You know, you, you, you remember think, the solo for one k you have to be self-employed. Right. Um, you could be right, Isaac. I mean, just from what I read, it seems like they, they're more focused on like the CalPERS, the big, big pension plans, having the ability to invest in real estate than you and me. Right. Personally, maybe you're right. Maybe it's because they want to give small businesses an advantage. I don't know. I just, if I had to kind of think about this as a government official, I just think the lobbyists for you know big pension plans probably have more weight than you and me. But whatever the reason is, there is a special rule under Section 514C9 where a solo 401k can take a non-recourse loan to acquire real estate, not acquire stocks, not acquire a tractor, but to acquire real estate 
without paying UBIT. And that's why you jumped into the solo, right? That's the main reason. Um, no, no. The, the main reason I jumped into the solo 401k, you mean as a client? Yeah. From, just, a, from, from, yeah, well, from an IRA client to a solo 401k client is because I, I, I'm, I'm self-employed also. Right. So it's a, and it's a better plan. The solo 401k is a better plan yes. Yes. Um, for many reasons. Higher contributions, and a loan option. That's another video. Right. We'll do more. Of it. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. But, but okay. it's a better plan. Yeah. Um, and, but you have to qualify. So I was a, a, a self-directed IRA uh, client, but I qualified to be a solo for one K client because I'm self-employed and that's one of the qualifications. And of course it is a better uh, plan because it doesn't trigger you bit number one for real estate, right? one big Which reason for real estate. And you still, and, and I, I was able to use leverage um, without Triggering. Right. So let's talk. So you were able to buy two properties in your 401k. You use leverage on one or both? I use leverage on one. Okay. And just so you know, I don't know if you're aware, but let the, the client, the, the uh, audience know that um, you do need to, um, you need to, uh, what do you call it? Um, have the, the solo 401k. First of all, you need to, um, so you need, you need the 401k to buy the real estate. You right. need the cash in it. Right. You use an LLC or no? Yes. Oh, that's what it is. I that's knew. Was. I, I read yes. your mind. Yeah. You need to have an LLC. Yeah, lenders so will trust. not lend directly to a 401k. Most exactly. Yes. To a trust. To a trust, right. So, I, I, I lost. I knew, I knew where you were going because it's but actually yes, a good Because point. I was like, I, was, yeah. I, I actually was fighting with them. I'm yeah. like, what is wrong with just using yeah. my, my uh, solo for yeah. 1k trust name? And they're like, no, you need yeah. to use an LLC, yeah. which I did have the LLC. Right. The lenders don't like lending directly to a trust. And in fact, Freddie and Fannie Mae, if you're buying property from them, they won't lend and they won't sell to a trust, to oh. a 401k for whatever reason. Well, but, yeah. um, so, Use leverage one of your properties and use it without tax. So obviously, what's leverage, right? You don't have to be a brilliant real estate developer to know that if you borrow money, you'll have more spending capacity, right? If you have 100K in your 401K and you have to pay cash, all you'd be able to do is buy a property for 100K. Correct. But if you can use leverage, you may be able to be, buy a property for 400K or 300K or 500K, which gives you the ability or buy multiple properties. Yes. So if you did that with an IRA, UBIT, unrelated business income tax, which is uh, as per section 514 of the code, triggers a potentially 37% tax on the debt, on the income attributable to the debt finance. So let me explain. Let's say Isaac put down 100K, okay? And you found an on recourse loan for 100K. So it's 50 50 debt to equity, right? And let's say instead of the 401K, you used an IRA, right? So you had 100K in your IRA, you go to this third party bank, they lend you 100K. You take your 200K, you buy the asset. And let's say you rent it out and you generate 20K net net after depreciation, after expenses, you, you're, you got a really good tenant, paying you a lot for rent and it's a great deal. Under the UBIT rules, because you use 50% debt, 50% of that $20,000 in that income, 10K in our example, is subject to this tax, which could go as high as 37%, at a low, low threshold, around 14 and a half thousand bucks. So by doing your deal in a 401k instead of an IRA, you save the tax on any net income. Now, some folks don't care because they're like, listen, real estate, I'm gonna have tons of depreciation, tons of expenses. I'm not gonna have net, net profits for a while. Then UBIT doesn't taste as bad. The only thing to remember is that if you sell the asset, while the loan is still outstanding, you got to pay you bid on the gains, which isn't great because- When you sell the asset. Right, that's not cool. Like who wants to pay you bid on the gains? So even if you net out your net income on an annual basis, where it's super low, under a thousand bucks, there's no you bid. Let's say someone comes along and is like, hey, Isaac, I want to buy your property for 500K, 200K gain. You may have to pay a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand, 50% of that gain, in our example, could be subject to this UBIT tax of potentially 37% tax, which is not great. Not great. So using the 401k is a monster advantage. The UBIT is an ugly four letter word. Again, it applies, you need at least $1,000 in net income, whether you're using a loan to buy stocks, real estate, uh, tractor trailer, a car, whatever it is. But 
using the advantage of the solo kit or 514C9, the code is a monster, monster advantage that lets you use non-recourse loan and acquire real estate without paying the EBIT tax. Which now, like if you, someone came along and bought your asset, bang, it's tax-free into your pocket, into your 401k. It's huge. So you set up the solo K, you didn't realize. But not realize. everyone qualifies for right. that Right, you, you need to have a business and you cannot have any full-time employee, employees, non-owners that work more than a thousand hours. So actually we're gonna do the next video we're gonna do. But if it works out be, for you, I think, you know, to pay the UBIT on, on, on the property that you purchase, it may work for you, everyone is different. Right, it still could work a number. Market is different it's, and, the, the net income thing, like a lot of good real estate developers don't care because there's not a lot of net income because right. they'll they'll use depreciation, they'll accelerate it. And the IRS lets you take into account expenses and depreciation to reduce the income. And, and in fact, if you have losses, you can use those going forward to offset gains. The big problem is if that loan is still outstanding when you sell it, right? A lot of real estate loans are 10, 15 year loans. So if you know you're gonna pay this loan off five, 10 years, you're gonna keep the property that long at least, and then I agree, UBIT's not bad, but if it's you're flipping real estate, then it's a little. It could be, you know, it could be a problem you got to consider. Now, you may say, well, 37% tax, I don't care, my IRA is going to pay it. I would never be able to buy this asset otherwise. Who cares? Yeah. That's fine. But the Solo K, ultimately, like I said, the next video we're going to be doing is Solo K Basics. So if you're watching this, check out the next video because we're going to be tapping Solo 401k Basics. And this is where Isaac can really shine and, and explain. You know, why he went solo from the IRA, self-record IRA, and kind of some of the advantages. So I think we're gonna wrap for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you, Isaac, Thank a lot you. of fun. Definitely, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this video, um, or subscribe to this channel, I should say. And thumbs up for the video, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, also, leave a comment, don't be shy. Uh, I do my best to get through them as quick as possible. Um, so uh, feel free to share your thoughts. Um, otherwise, um, appreciate you guys watching, um, really appreciate the support and see everyone again next time.